thinking is that we are hurtling off the edge of the cliff into a recession. That recession we've been forecasting, Julian Bittle and myself at Global Macro Investor, from um, about this time last year, actually, we saw it in the forward-looking data and the current data is catching up. So we're now, I use the business, um, the ISM as probably my best guide to the business cycle. And that's kind of at this 48 or so level, 47 point whatever level. And really just below 47 is 100% chance of recession. Now, all the forward-looking indicators like new orders are completely off a cliff. Uh, employment, prices paid, you name it, every single indicator. We have a database of one and a half thousand indicators um, a global macro investor, and it's all falling off a cliff. So this is the point where you get to on Twitter, where everyone goes, oh, my God, there's a recession. Surely stocks are going to go down. No shit, Sherlock. They've already gone down. The Nasdaq went down 37.7%, I think, uh, from the high. But what's interesting is that the forward-looking indicators are starting to suggest that we will hit the bottom um, of the recessionary wave in about April. So we're likely to get, I think, two, maybe three quarters of negative GDP. But I think it's more akin to the 1990s style recession, which was the stock market fell 20 percent, the economy fell 2 percent, ISM went down to 40 or so, it all recovered, there was some overhang, the economy was slow for a while, and then eventually recovered. A normal garden recession. That's what I think we're in the middle of. I think people are confusing prices, which is the unwind of the um, prices as in markets, the unwind of everything that happened in the in 2021 got unwound in 2022. And I saw Dario Perkins on Twitter calling it the A-shaped uh, economy. So as opposed to a V-shape, it was an A-shape. So it went up, came back down, and it's reverted back to trend. So almost all of the charts have reverted back to trend. I think oil still got a bit of a way to go. Uh, Nat gas got there. Uh, most of the commodities have got there. Most of these things are down 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent now, uh, taking the inflation fears out. But this this recessionary thing is what's in everybody's head. And the narrative in the market is, well, just wait for the earnings leg. Do you not remember 2001? Do you not remember the second leg in 2008? Those were very different styles of recession to that, in my view. Of course, I could be wrong. My guess is when I look at the rate of change of the S&P or the NASDAQ, they've all entirely priced in a recession. So the NASDAQ priced in an ISM of about 37, um, which is where my forward-looking indicator, my Global Macro Investor Financial Conditions Index, has been pricing the bottom of the ISM trough. And it's all coming around the same date. So what's happened is the markets have been forward-looking. They discounted the recession fast. And they're now starting to discount the pickup on the other side. And that's coinciding with the rate of change of Fed increases coming down. The ECB are the same. The Bank of England are the same. Everybody's slowing down their rate increases and are going to pause mode. Whether we get one more hike or not, I doubt it, actually. But there's a chance we get one more pause. The bond market's starting to realize that that's probably the case as well. Also, global liquidity, M2 cycle, stuff like that, that's been picking up. Um, it started with China and it's and it's going to start resonating throughout the world. Things like the falling dollar, um, falling commodity prices start picking up this kind of rate of uh, change of liquidity. That also suggests that we kind of are bottoming around these levels. So we've got global liquidity bottoming. We've got the rate of change of interest rates. So that's taken the pressure off the neck. You know, the, 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 the um, Jay Powell's had his foot on the neck of the markets and, and the economy. So he takes his foot off things can rise again. So I'm now bullish risk. And I've been flagging this for a while. And I flagged it when I started buying crypto in June. And I flagged it when I re-added it. And I've been talking about, I think the inflationary pressure is coming. I think inflation goes negative next year. Um, actually, this year, sorry. I think the rate of decline of commodities is much sharper than anybody realizes. I think wages are rolling over. Um, I also think rents are rolling over. So the whole lot is coming down. And that will go all the way through till 2024. We can talk about the longer term picture later. Do we get the secondary wave of inflation or not? Most of you know, I don't think so, but we can talk about that. But so we've got rid of the inflation. We've got a weaker dollar, global growth picking up, forward looking indicators picking up. Technology should outperform. This is very much like the um, 2018 episode where the Fed stopped pausing, uh, stopped hiking. That was December 2018. The markets just went on a tear. 
the Fed eventually cut rates in August 2019 and then stopped QT in September 2019. Um, over that period, I think Bitcoin did 285 percent um, and many of the markets did really well over the course of that year. And generally speaking, at this point in the cycle, the kind of macro spring, you tend to see the S&P doing this, the Nasdaq doing this, growth tech doing that and crypto doing that. And that's my expectation that um, if you're, you know, not volatility adjusting the returns, you want to get the fast, the back the fastest horse, it's likely to be crypto, that it'll be technology stocks, the growthy end, stuff like ARK is really up 100% or so. Um, then it'll be the NASDAQ and then it'll be the S&P. Uh, commodities tend to do okay. Uh, cyclical companies tend to do pretty well in this environment as well, tend not to outperform technology. Um, emerging markets tend to do pretty well, particularly if the dollar's slightly weak. So that's kind of where we are. So as you guys just saw right there, Ra was comparing where we're at or where we've been at over the past couple months. He was comparing that to 2018, 2019. So if we compare this cycle to 2018, 2019, you can see Bitcoin peaked back here in late 2017 at around $20,000 and it fell around 85%. And if you compare that to where we are right now, Bitcoin topped out at around November of 2021. And at the bottom, we fell around 78%. Very similar there. And then also, if you look at this area where Bitcoin was trading at during 2018 before it had a huge fall when the Federal Reserve raised interest rates, you can see Bitcoin was trading at around 7,700 and it fell around 60% there from right here to the bottom. And if you compare that to where Bitcoin is trading at here at around forty three thousand dollars before the Federal Reserve you know, started raising interest rates, we can see that Bitcoin fell from there to the bottom around sixty seven percent. So what Raul is saying is we could potentially see something like this happen when the Federal Reserve stops, does a U-turn and see some huge green months for Bitcoin. We've already seen a pretty good month in January for Bitcoin, but you can see from the bottom to the top of these couple of months, Bitcoin went from around $3,000 all the way up to $13,777 for a 344% move. So if we saw that same 344% move for Bitcoin, if this was the bottom back here at around $15,000, that would put us almost all the way back up to around $50,000. That would be some huge price gains here for Bitcoin coming over the next couple of months if we can mirror this move we saw back in early 2019. So something to pay attention to there. So thank you guys for watching that clip here today. If you found any value, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to leave your thoughts on this in the comment section below. Are you as bullish as Raw Paul is on risk in 2023? Do you think we'll see some more price gains for Bitcoin coming soon? What do you think is going to happen, guys? Put your thoughts in the comment section below and thank you for watching. My name is Aaron from the Bitcoin Bros. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.